as you know, Luminar Neo at the moment can't stitch panoramas together. But there is one method that you can use to do that. And just in case you're a landscape photographer that enjoys photographing panoramas, and perhaps this is the only software that you want to use to edit your images, I'm going to show you a way that you can stitch your images together. On the screen just now, I have a template that I have made. It's I have made it in Photoshop and I've went for 6,000 pixels by 3,500 pixels. Now, the reason I chose those sizes is because that will work okay. It's a Z7 II that I photograph with and this should work okay with the size of images that I want to bring in. Now, the images when I'm shooting a panorama, I normally shoot vertical for the panorama and with this size I reckon I could get maybe four possibly five images blended together in this. How we're going to do this it is a very old method of doing it but as I say if you enjoy doing panoramas this might give a new lease of life to Luminar Neo for you. So I'll jump into my catalogue and I'll show you the four images that I'm going to stitch together. Now these are images from Iceland and our last trip there. And these were shot with the 85mm lens. Yes, they were. And as I mentioned, they're shot vertically. One thing you've got to remember when shooting panoramas is your tripod has to be level. You can do it handheld, but if you're going to use this method to do it, the tripod I would recommend and making sure it's level. So we'll go on and we'll do this. So I'm gonna go back into this image here, which is 6,000 by 3,500 pixels. And I'm going to get into the edit panel. Now this is our base layer, so this image here will disappear entirely. And what I'm going to do, I've already preloaded them into the layers section as well. So if we go into see all here, we have three in here. So I have the first image, which will be that one there. And all I'm going to do is move it across to the end. And as you notice, the opacity is at 50%. I'm going to take it up to 100. So as you can probably guess just now, we are going to manually do this. And then I'm going to add the next one, which is that one there. So, as you can see, that's how this is dropped in. Now, what we have to do is we have to go in and try and match these up. It might seem a long process, but it is, quite, it is worth it if you want to have the ability to shoot panoramas and also edit them in Luminar Neo. Now, it is manual, so it does take a wee bit of time. I might not get it perfect because I'm wearing my contact lenses just now, but at least it will give you the idea of how it all comes together. So I am going to try and match using the edge of this cliff here and this dark area. I'm going to try and match these two up. I'm not looking at anything else in the scene. I'm looking for these. So let's try and take them in. And the closer they are to a match, the less blurry they will look. Now, right now, if I let that go, that actually looks quite sharp to me, but that could be these contact lenses. Yes, it does look blurry down here, but let's see what happens when I do that. That actually looks okay. Do the mountains at the top there move out? Yes, they do. So if I move that down, is that better? I was looking at that area there. That actually looks better and it looks as if it's going to join well. So I am going to leave that at that just now. The next two that we bring in will be exactly the same. So I'm going to go plus, I'm going to look for the next one. So you get the idea with that and how these all stitch together. So let's go for, that's the one I've just added, let's go for that one. And we take that across and we are looking to line up that and that and get them as sharp as possible. So let's take that in. This is a really old way of doing it. And sometimes you actually have to do this manually in Photoshop 
if you haven't been careful with your shot. So I'm trying to line this up as best I can. When I think I have it, I'll let it go. And I'll turn up the opacity to see. Now, you can't tell at the moment because of the indicator line of the new layer that you've brought in. So if I jump to another one, we can see that there and you can see what's actually happened in here. So we have to decide whether this is going to be okay or not. Now, I could turn the opacity of that right down. Turn it off, in fact, just to see where that area is coming from. Now, from my point of view, that means that I need to move this that way. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to move it across and bring it down to there. And that there then tells me that I've went too far with it because the rocks down there, if I hide that layer, don't have this second bit in there. So I'll bring the layer back in. So it has to get back across to around about there. And that there is going to cause us a tiny bit of problem. But that's the good thing. I can show you this. So right now we are going for a three-stitch panel with this, not the four that I would previously mentioned. So let's have a look at this as an entirety. What we have to do now is we have to decide here, here, and here what parts of the image we're going to mask out. Now, I've seen already where I'm going to mask out, and it's going to be that area there from that layer. So each time that I click this, you can see within it, that's the layer that I'm on just now, which is this one here. But it's this layer here that I need to blend away. So let's go in and try that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to remove some of this area here. And by doing that, I'm going to get into masking. And I'm going to take the brush, and I'm going to take a raise. Now the brush size I'm going to keep quite small and that works okay if maybe even a tiny bit smaller. Softness 100% and the strength I'll just leave it 100% for this and then I'm going to work into this. Just to see I'm going to zoom in slightly as well 50% just to see where I can work to for this. Now you have to check the entire image when you're doing this. This is the bit that takes the longest. After you've lined it up, this is the part that takes the longest. Now, if I don't see any lines down here that I need to remove, I won't be removing them. So I'm going to move around here and I don't see anything there that's too repetitive. I could go in there a tiny bit. Yep, I got away with that. But it doesn't mean that you have to paint directly through. If you see any lines coming, I would paint them. So that looks acceptable. How's that? That's the best way of putting it. That looks acceptable for this. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to zoom back out and we've got more going on in the second fit to screen. We have more going on here because we've got more things that can cause it to look out. So this one I am going to zoom into. So it's that layer there, which is the second one, because this is the overlap. And it's this one here that we need to work on. If you remember, that's our first layer. We overlaid this layer, and then we overlaid that layer. So we line the three of them up in this case, and then we work back through the three of them to raise areas. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to get into masking. And because this is so fine, I can see a line there. I'm going to zoom in for this one. And this, as I say, this is where we may get most of the problems. I tried it before and there was a couple here, so I thought I would point them out to you. And if I take the brush and I'll keep everything the same. So if I do that there and then just gently through the mountain there, and you saw that we just get rid of that, right? There is a slight line here, and that matched that up better, just in there, slight line there. And what you have to do, I really should have worn my glasses for this instead of my contact lenses, is look right down the image and see if there's any 
definite lines, right? I can't see any at the moment. Perhaps you'll see some. I can't see any at the moment. So that's it. Fit to screen. That's how you stitch them together. And it is quite quick. I'm assuming that took about 10 minutes there. It is quite quick. Depending on what you have in your scene, it could take a tiny bit longer. And remember that you can also scale up and scale down once it's here to make it fit. It's never going to fit perfectly. When you're shooting your panoramas for editing in Luminar, remember just to, I would actually go a half each time and that will make your stitching a lot easier and a lot simpler. Uh, and also, as I said at the beginning, remember a level tripod. Last thing for this, apart from the edit, is the crop. So you can see that how that's lined up. So I'm going to get into crop. I'm going to choose a crop for this. Uh, I'm going to go 16 by 9 just to see what it's like. Nope, let's go 16 by 10. And let's just drag that in slightly. Just a bit there. This rock coming out the bottom, I may go free here. Take that up just because I don't know if I want that rock just sticking out the bottom there. Maybe take that into there. Take it back up to here. Take it back to there. And then let's crop that. That looks okay. Now to edit this, you have to export it and then re-import it. So I'll do that very quickly and then show you the final image. So here we have the final image on the screen just now and as you see it all works well and in a relatively short space of time. There's a few things you have to consider shooting any panel but especially if you're going to be doing it manually and a couple of these are a level tripod will make all the difference to your photos and for the case of Luminar Neo, because you're doing this manually, I wouldn't photograph with too wide an angle of lens because of the curvature at the edges of the frames. It is a lot more difficult and more time consuming to stitch these images together. So here's the final edited image and it's from Dryorly Beach in Iceland. If I've said that correctly, I apologise if I haven't, but it's just to show anyone that's perhaps going on the Luminar camp to Iceland that you can consider taking panoramic images. If Luminar Neo is the only software that you edit with, you can see that it can be done and it works quite well. It is manual, but it still works well. Thanks again for watching. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.